This is the BBC. That's what it means. Mr. Sellers is really trying to sabotage the highly esteemed Goon Show. <laughs> Whales. I love whales, but you really see them in the fish shops these days, do you? <laughs> <laughs> but, who business? Mr. Greenslade, button up your kilt and, and tell the waiting masses what's the play. Certainly. Ladies and gentlemen, let <laughs> your it bleed. <laughs> Stop that. Yes, sir. Which way did it go? I think we should know that. I think we should know that. I say, look, sir. Remember, this is the highly esteemed Goon Show. <laughs> Sam! Sam! That may be good enough for other talking wireless shows, but not for us. And therefore... And therefore, let us now hear the usual ovation that greets the Goon Show! Thank you. <laughs> Pull up a sock and sit down. Whilst I unfold the story of The Booted Gorilla, Part One. <laughs> The well-known piece of land. And there in the tree forest where civilization has not touched, there as darkness falls, all one can hear is... That's all it please. <laughs> Deep in the forest, a safari slowly wands its way through the dance tingle. Oh, 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 Seagull, the heat, yes, the heat. Get it hot. Yes, it. It must be the heat. Of course, the heat. <laughs> it's the hottest heat we've ever hot. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh. These jungle roads. Well, they're so dusty. We can't get a cleaner. <laughs> must be the heat. The heat. Yes. Oh, it's it's a bit of a fag. What is half a cigarette? Oh. <laughs> the heat. The heat. The heat. The heat. Oh, the heat. Look here. The gun bellow pointed a quivering saxophone at the footprints of a gorilla. <laughs> Suddenly, behind a bush, they had stopped. Well, most of us stop behind a bush sometime. Now. <laughs> yes, but this is different. Impossible. <laughs> it must be the heat. Look, Major, look. Here the gorilla's footprints stop. And then they start again as footprints. Boots? A gorilla wearing boots? Well, if this is true, the animal is worth a fortune. A circus would give us the earth for it, even the water. Then, then they'll catch it. We will catch it, even if I have to fight it single-handed. Glad blood not I have my own gut. Why are they showing? <laughs> Only when the sun's behind you. Must be the heat. <laughs> now, action station for Operation Gorilla. First, he go and take a letter. To Buana, grid pipe thin, care of the London Gorilla Collector Society, Park Lane, Wapping. Yes, Nora, I have... Come in. Hello. Have you ever had a man uncontrollable in post? You silly, twisted boy, you... <laughs> Now, give me that axe. Now, pull up a sock and sit down. Thank you. Is this the uh, gorilla collector's site? Yes, your cage is waiting. <laughs> I'm not a gorilla, I'm Buana Zigun. This takes a bit of swallowing. Perhaps he's mad. Little does he know I'm as sane as the next fellow. Little does he know that I'm the next fellow. <laughs> This ragged goon. Sigun, this is Buana Eccles, the famous specimen. Specimen of what? We're not quite sure yet. <laughs> What's he walking around in bare feet for? Poor fellow was born like it, you know. <laughs> How terribly terrible. It must be the heat. Yes, the heat. <laughs> no! Not a business. Yes. 
I have heard a message from Bloodlock in the heart of Africa. Oh, let's have it. Right. Joe, yes, this. Signed yours truly. P.S. <laughs> what beautiful handwriting. <laughs> so then, you give us a plan to catch this booty gorilla. Yes, pull up a sock and sit down. <laughs> Listeners. Does it strike you as at all significant that in a story that concerns a gorilla that wears boots, Echoes is barefooted? Could it be that these clues will bear feet? <laughs> Sing it over while we hear from the booted mouth organist, Guana Max Geldray. <laughs> how to catch this gorilla. All you need is a portable collapsible boot repair shop. What for? Dear little comrade man, that gorilla's boots can't last forever. Eventually the soles will wear out and he's bound to look for a boot repairer. Get it? Ying Tong in live hell! Good! <laughs> Wait! Who's going to serve behind the counter? That gorilla will be ferocious. Hmm. Now, who do I know who's a mug? Oh, I've got to go upstairs and back. Oh, <laughs> Splendid, splendid. Now, Seagull, you go and find a collapsible boot shop. King Kong in the life hell. Good! I scoured the country for a suitable shop. Then finally I found one the right size in a little village in the city of East Coca. Good morning, sir. Good day. Cobble and cobble and I cobble away. I cobble again. Am I? Good morning. 
I'm a cobbler, you know. Really? I could have sworn you were a Nubian chicken sexer. <laughs> there is a resemblance, I must agree. A cobbler gay am I. A cobbler... Does this wrinkled old cobbler know what he's talking about? Yes, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> Good, then I'll talk to him. Splendid idea. <clears throat> Pardon me, sir. Yes, sir. You see, he answered you. <laughs> so he did. Thank you. Sir, where's the sign outside that says his shop is for sale? Oh, yes, yes, the proprietor put that up. Could I speak to him, please? Certainly, I'll just... Wait, wait, before you get him, uh, how much is he asking? Well, I... Uh... Oh, come on, now. Well, well, well. Here's a fiver. Hey, tell us, how much is he asking? Uh, Fifty pounds. Is that all? <laughs> I was going to offer him 500. <laughs> I've saved myself 450 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> well, go and get him. I am him. <laughs> the price, 500 pounds. I say, look here. I, I, I... Henry, Henry, there's no paper. No. Minnie, uh, this man wants to buy the shop. Well, they're asking 50 pounds for it, Henry. And may have it. If he's to out for it. Yes, I'll try and knock him down. Here's the hammer. <laughs> Sir, 500 pounds is too much. Well, um, 450 pounds, then. No, no, no. Hmm. I'll go to 200 pounds. Uh, no, 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 buddy. You have to drop more. <laughs> Don't be like that. Talk customers, buddy. Yes, buddy. There's me, buddy. There's you, buddy. Yes, buddy. Very well, 100 pounds. No, 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 buddy. Our price is 50 pounds. You pay it or we don't sell. Take your pick. All right, 50 pounds. Done. Bravo. Gad, you Americans drive a hard bargain. <laughs> We're not Americans. No? Those elastic-sided boots had me completely fooled. Ah, well, we like the modern style, buddy, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you do, buddy. Crazy, buddy, crazy. Yes, crazy, yes. <laughs> well, there's your 50 pounds. Oh, look, Minnie, it's all in money. <laughs> Yes, sir, I want you out of here by tomorrow. You want us to get out? Of course. But we go with the shop. We're included in the price. Dear listeners, I realize that Mr. Crum and Miss Bannister were the very people to serve behind the counter when we erected a shop in Africa. <laughs> very well, you shall come with me. <laughs> On the outskirts of the gorilla forest, Bloodnock awaits the return of Siegel. It's a humid night, and he lays sweating on his charpoy. Oh, oh, this heat. Where's my lime juice? Blast those mosquitoes. <laughs> what a nasty place to be bitten. <laughs> I shall never sleep on my stomach again. <laughs> Pour me a butter pig and a butter mallet. Very well, sir. Yes, yes. Ellington, play us a magyar melody on your electric elephant cask and lurgy to that. Yeah, well. Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream. Make her complexion like peaches and cream. Give her two lips like roses and clover. Then tell me that my lonesome nights are over. Sandman, I'm so alone. Don't have nobody to call my own Please turn on your magic beam Mr. Sandman, bring me a dream hey, I ain't got nobody And nobody cares for me Now listen Take a chance with me Yes I'll sing sweet love songs, honey All the time If you come and be my sweet baby mine I, I, I ain't got no body And no Thank <laughs> you.
cutest that I've ever seen. Give her this word that I am not a rover. Tell her that my love's a nice old lover. Sam, man, I'm so alone. Don't have nobody to call my own. Please turn on your magic beam, Mr. Sandman. Mr. Sandman. Mr. Sandman. Bring me Going your back, your last lad. Yes, you have the collapsible boots up and two collapsible attendants. <laughs> uh, Mr. Crum and uh, a lady. A lady? Fud me nerdless. <laughs> Lay off me clean ducks and me dirty chickens. <laughs> Major, may I introduce Miss Dennister? Oh, what magical spot do you hail from? Sangavella Stocks, why? I was asking a lady of you. Naughty man. Now, my dear, dear lady, how delightful to have a member of the opposite sex out here. Oh, what a delightful, ravishing creature you are. <laughs> Do you really mean that? Yeah. Wait. Huh? Is it? Yes. Can it be? Is it? Yes, it is. Oh. Minnie Bannister, the darling of Roper's Light Horse, yes. and voted Miss Ball Curry of 1901. <laughs> oh, Dennis. <laughs> oh, the vapors. Oh, oh dear, dear. I will remember. It's dressing Dennis of the Calcutta new followers. Oh. Oh, me. Back from the dead. Are you? <laughs> How long are you staying? <laughs> remember that locket of hair you gave me? You still wear it? Yes, it covers the bald spot on me nuts. <laughs> Dennis. Oh, Minnie, my dear lady. Dennis, Dennis. Oh, remember that last dance we had at the governor's ball in Concord? Oh, yes. That was the night that they played. Our song. Our song. Let us sing it again together. You know, I don't know how we get away with it. Friends who laid for the trapping of the gorilla. Special stout-hearted scouts were sent ahead to track it down. Do you know something? Oh, I got a study in me. But I tell you something, I do not like this stout-hearted scout part. In the dreaded jungle wearing only short trousers, harm can come to a growing lad. <laughs> Thinks. <laughs> this is not the usual blue butter lingerie. Thinks again. I must speak to the writer about getting a sucking. Well, you seen any signs of that supposed gorilla? No, and I did not want you. Oh, it's a good job I ain't wearing boots, or sure enough I'd be in that cage by now. <laughs> <laughs> I should have stayed at home by the fire with Raphael. Oh, who's Raphael? That's my pretty cat. Oh. <laughs> oh, what the, what do you know? You've got a pussycat? Yes, I have got a pussycat. Well, oh. I ain't got a pussycat, but, but I, I got a bunny rabbit. Oh, I have not got a bunny rabbit. I, I got one. You got a bunny rabbit? No, yeah, no. Yeah. You got one? Yeah, I got a pussycat. Oh, oh. 
Just in case some stupid people didn't understand that conversation, it was briefly that Blue Bottle had a bunny rabbit and Echoes had a pussycat called Ruffles. I suppose the BBC do know what they're doing. Of course they do. And so to the final dramatic scene, the night that the trap for the booted gorilla is laid. Yes. In the clearing, we erected the boot repair shop. Inside were Mr. Crum and Miss Bannister. At midnight, the rest of us climbed up to our observation post in the trees around the boot shop. We were linked by wooden field telephone. Hello? Mr. Deacon, the lights are fused in the shop. I'll have them fixed. Yes. Yeah. Oh, tell me, what is this customer we're expecting? What does he look like? Well, uh, <coughs> he'll be wearing a hairy coat. <laughs> okay? Um, okay. Eccles? Not yet. Go to the lamp store and take Mr. Crumb three two-watt bulbs. No, to phone blood now. I heard you buzz, Mr. Deacon. I heard you buzz me. Well, buzz off. I don't want you. <laughs> Do not be cruel to Blue Bottle Kings. I'm doing a man's hero's job. Make space with iron protruding jaw like Anthony Steele, but stops at teeth caller. Well, any signs of the gorilla? No, it's very dark, but me and Echoes is still watching. But Echoes is here. Oh. <laughs> there? Yes. Then who's this? Down and okay, promise you won't stop me. <laughs> of course not. Just wait till I brush blue bottle. <laughs> blue bottle was up the tree with a gorilla. I just caught something that jumped in the tree. Blue bottle still up the tree. So the person I'm brushing down. <laughs> I'll soon fix that naughty thing. Chapter 11. Hello, Bezos! Hello? Mr. Deacon, I'm speaking from the shop. The gentleman with the hairy coat is here. Let's knock. He's got the gorilla in the shop. Mr. Crown? Yes? Keep him there. Oh, I think he wants to stay. Why? He's standing on my head. <laughs> quick! Quick to the shop! <laughs> 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 See anything through the window? No, the shop's in complete darkness. Must be the heat. <laughs> oh, I just bought them light bulbs for the shop. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you'd, you'd better go inside and put them in, hadn't you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I say, Captain, you won't have a rotten swan, Captain, sending him in there with that gorilla alone? Well, you go in with him then. I can't. Why not? I'm a red and swan too. <laughs> He's gone in. Do you think they're fighting in there? <laughs> I think 
Okay, stop. <laughs> Let's go in. You keep me covered with that blank check. Yes. <laughs> Good heavens, look. Look. The gorilla bound for the mouth. Who did this? I gave him the old one too, buddy. Yes. Did you? Well, where's Echo? The tire ran out after Mr. Crud. Wait, wait. This is the gorilla. This one's got bare feet. Help me, 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 me. Look, up there's the booty gorilla chasing Mr. Crumb. Then who's this hard idiot lying tossed up on the floor? Guess who? Last orders, please. <laughs> The Goon Show, a recorded program featuring Peter Sellers, Harry Deacon, and Spike Milligan, with the Wellington Quartet and Max Geldray. The orchestra was conducted by Wally Stott, script by Spike Milligan and Eric Sykes, announcer Wallace Greenplay, the program produced by Peter Deacon.